If we hear the sound strider, that indicates a partial upper airway obstruction. Remember, the lungs is our lower airway. I'm talking about the upper airway. I'm talking about the area around your vocal cords. This is our upper airway. Now, with strider, this is still producing a sound, which means we don't have a full airway obstruction. That partial obstruction brings a strider sound like this. Here's a sound right here. I'll play it for you. There it is. Now, strider, as you just heard, is a high pitched sound that's commonly heard on inspiration when we take a breath in. We hear that breath in, that is where we hear the sound as it's passing through that partial obstruction in the upper airway. Now, let's say we do nothing. If we did nothing, most likely, using our brain, well, what do you think would happen? Well, what would happen is this partial obstruction would most likely get worse and go into a full obstruction. If we have a full obstruction in someone's airway, we hear no sounds, we hear no noise. So keep that in mind. If you hear Strider, it's an emergency, but we have some time. Now, what are some of the risk factors of developing this upper airway sound of Strider? First, patients with known allergies. So for example, you can get anaphylaxis, which can cause swelling to your upper airway, which could result in strider, number one. Number two, certain pediatric emergencies. We're gonna talk about those in a moment. Now, trauma victims, if there is a severe enough trauma, one thing I always think about is, let's say a baseball, you know, we have a hitter playing baseball, swings, and then let's say that, that baseball was to go with direct, direct contact. That's a case, right? So heavy trauma to the upper airway can cause strider of that area could so damage from trauma. A burn victim. So inhalation burns. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. And then the last piece here is going to be an increased risk of a foreign body airway obstruction. So what are two class of patients that have an increased risk for a foreign body airway obstruction? Well, that would be I think about elderly patients that have difficulty swallowing, like advanced age. And the second piece I think about is pediatrics, whether it's difficulty swallowing or it's the fact that they're curious and they always want to, you know, put things in their mouth, right? So that's one thing that we're thinking about as well with who's more at risk of strider actually developing it. There are five main causes of strider you need to know to pass your test. Here they are. Number one is croup. Now, croup is a viral infection of the upper airway. Now, real quick, both croup and epiglottitis, when I say infection of the upper airway, what they're both going to do, it's going to swell up the area around the glottic opening, your vocal cords. Okay, this is why it's so sinister. If our vocal cords go completely shut, then we can't breathe. So we're inflaming and we're infecting the area around vocal cords with these two emergencies. Now, croup is more gradual. So you'll hear a barking cough. You'll see a gradual fever. The big key is this. Patients with croup, they don't typically drool as much. There's more drooling epiglottitis, but the big key is the age. You don't have an adult patient with croup. Pediatrics have croup. Typically, from around six months to four years is a croup age. Now, epiglottitis. Remember, it ends in itis. It's an inflammation of what we're talking about. So epiglottitis is, the epiglottis is inflamed. There it is, right? Again, the area around the vocal cords, all right? And that general area is where we're having this inflammation. Now, this is a bacterial infection of that area, which is, in this case, the epiglottis is inflamed. The big key here, you're going to have drooling. You're going to have sore throats. It's a more faster onset. You may have heard about someone going to sleep at night. They wake up in the middle of the night and they can't breathe. They have strider. Think epiglottitis and yes, fever as well. Okay. So the, the big key, remember, is the age component. Croup, six months, four years. Even an adult can have epiglottitis because all I'm telling you with epiglottitis 
your epiglottis is inflamed. Anyone can have that, but typically this is pediatric. Pretty cool? All right, let's continue. Number three is inhalation burns. When the upper airway is exposed to excessive extreme heat, our upper airway tissues start to get irritated, causing them to swell, which causes our strider that we've been talking about this whole time. So upper airway is exposed to extreme heat, rapid swelling of the upper airway tissues. So what are some things that might clue you in? Obviously, if we're at a fire burn event, right, watch out for that, obviously, but goes without saying, we hear a hoarse voice. There's burns, any, I would say anywhere above, neck, neck up, and anywhere neck up, you should be highly suspicious of this. Now I wrote here, you know, burns on or around the face. People talk about um, facial hair or uh, nose hairs or um, hair on the patient's head being burned. That kind of goes without saying, but I'll, we'll cover it here for you. So face, nose, hair. Consider, well, if that's, okay, if this is burned, then their airway will also burn, right? Right? Now, wrote it down here. Like a lot of these, if you're an EMT, you highly want to consider ALS intervention, possibly doing an ALS intercept on the way to the hospital. So it all depends on how close you are to the hospital. But especially if you're in a longer distance away, you may want to consider intercepting while you're going rapid transport with all these emergencies because of the possibility of a full airway obstruction, right? So I'm saying consider ALS and or if you are ALS, know, hey, I might need to intubate this patient because the airway is so severe. So things to think about with these cases. Now I have two more for you. Now, number four is anaphylaxis. Remember, anaphylaxis is two or more body systems being affected by an allergen. So obviously, if I have hives by myself, just hives, well, I'm not gonna have strider because strider would affect my respiratory tract, right? Hives is my skin, that's one body system, right? So if I have someone with hives and strider and wheezing, well, my respiratory system and my skin's affected. That's two body systems, okay, we're in anaphylaxis. Now, commonly they all come together, so I wrote them down here for you. So, nausea, vomiting, wheezing, hives, we know it's strider because it's one of the causes of strider, Hey, remember, swollen tissues. You know, you may have seen uh, uh, some famous pictures of patients with, you know, giant tongues, right? Because they had an allergy, right? So that is a case as well. Now, what are some of the first first line treatments, right? There's more that we can do. But what are the first line treatments for anaphylaxis we think about? Well, oxygen via with albuterol, duoneb, nebulizers. The first line action is really going to be EpiPen or IM Epi, our first line treatments. Then we think about Benadryl again, and nebulizers. These are some of our first line treatments in EMS for anaphylaxis. This is a fourth cause of Strider. I got one more. So you're probably thinking, what can number five be? Number five is a foreign body airway obstruction. The elderly, the very old, the pediatrics, the very young are more at risk. Here's my big tip for you. The big tip for you is make sure your McGill forceps are ready. Remember, what are the McGill forceps? So the innovation blade, your, let's just say, your, the traditional way of using McGill forceps is you have a full obstruction. We use the blade and then we take the McGill forceps, grab the foreign body area obstruction, and now we have a clear airway, great. Now, why am I saying to have these ready? Because strider is a partial obstruction. That foreign body is one movement away from becoming a full obstruction. So if you're at a foreign body airway case, have the McGills ready, and if you can use them to get it out, great, then use them as soon as you can. Now, a lot of you asked in the comments about how to prepare for school, how to get through school, and how to pass an REMT. The first link in the description is a study tool that I give to all my students to accomplish all of that. It's called the Video Vault. Inside the video vault is over 480 videos of content, audio files, worksheets, practice quizzes, our community group. What I do in the video vault is take all the concepts you need to know to pass school at NREMT and I break them down simply for you. So that way you just follow along with the videos, you follow the study plan, 
and you pass. I give my students lifetime access in the first link in the description and I'll see you on the inside.